I mean, so it's funny you say that. So after my like six months of internship, I got an email one day that said, thanks for all the hard work, but uh, we don't have a job for you. So this is going to be your last day. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, and I remember I walked out of the office and I'm like standing in midtown Manhattan and like, it was just like the one single tear that starts like <laughs> dripping down my face. And I was just like, what am I going to do? Good job. Yeah. You're pressing your vibe. Yo, what up, guys? It's Gary Vee, and it's time for the Daily Bread. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket, because I'm a hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward, right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry, because it's time for the Daily Bread. What is up, everybody? This is Tyler Harris, your host, and this is the Breadwinner Podcast. I am uh, extremely excited today because we have got Mr. Tyler Babin in the house, not literally in the house. He's where are you at, New York right now? Uh, yeah, yeah, New York. Awesome. Well, we got Babin here. Uh, for those of you, man, you've probably seen him on Daily V, you've seen him just all over the place with this crazy crew out there with Vayner Media. Um, and, and working with Gary V, but that is going to be the last time I say the word Gary V on this interview because we're not interviewing Gary V, we're interviewing Tyler Babbin. This is my mom, and this is my dad, and I'm the young savage right there. Yesterday, my mom texted me, I can't believe how crazy your life has gotten. And I responded with, can you believe I was working at Staples two years ago? There's nothing in the world more common than unsuccessful people with talent, so leave the house before you find something worth staying for. It's honestly the thing I think about every day as I'm walking out of my apartment. I can't wait for us to reminisce on this era. The moments we wish time would stop. The mountaintop stories, hopping fences, chasing dreams, late night escapes where the real world got to turn off and seconds felt like hours as if we were floating in space. Man, I'm, I'm extremely excited to get to know you a little bit better, connect with you, and uh, let the audience know, you know, who is Tyler Babin? So, man, I'm going to bring you on right now. Number one, thank you so much for being on the podcast, brother. Yeah, yeah, man, absolutely. I mean, whenever you get asked by another Tyler to do a podcast, you can't really it's, say no. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm I'm only doing Facebook ads, retargeting Tyler's right now. So <laughs> that's perfect. That's a su it's a super good strategy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, man, tell everybody. I want let's go back pre Vayner Media. So, who is yeah. Tyler Babin? Yeah. So I uh, I'm a kid from a small town in Florida. I was born in Pensacola, but. I really grew up in Tallahassee. So you're in Atlanta, right? So not, not too I'm, far away from I you. I spend like three to four nights a week in Atlanta. I actually live in Greenville, South Carolina, but uh, my family, gotcha, we've got gotcha. a place down in Destin, man. So I've been going down in that area oh, for right a on. long time. Oh yeah. Super familiar. So I, I grew up in Tallahassee and I was always uh, a kid who was attracted to cameras and, and content. And so I uh, I started making videos with my friends when I was really young and, and started, you know, learning the process of editing and, and stuff like that. I was fortunate that I went to a, a high school that was had a had a very advanced film program. So we made like a, a, a mock news show every week. Hmm. Um, so, I mean, by the time I was a sophomore in high school, I was sort of really hmm. orchestrating a lot of things there. And, and I was sort of like the lead editor putting that together. Um Finishing high school, didn't really know what I was going to do. Uh, I didn't really want to go to college, but my parents were like, no, you're going to college. Uh, so ended up uh, kind of sort of just dicking around. Can I curse on this thing? Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. Um, so I just messed around in, in like a community college for a couple of years before I dropped out and then moved to New York about two years ago. Got it. And so when did that parlay into working with VaynerMedia and how did all that go down? 
So it actually, I moved to New York and immediately like the next day it started an internship at Vayner. Okay. Um, I was actually, when I was living in Florida, I was a really big fan of Chase Jarvis, who like, if you're familiar with Gary, you're probably familiar with what Chase is up to. Mm -hmm. And then whenever Gary did uh, Chase's show for Jab, 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 Right Hook, before that came out, mm -hmm. that was the first time I was introduced to Gary. And I was like, oh, wow, this guy's actually kind of a little bit more interesting than Chase is. Maybe I want to go work for him. So. <laughs> That's where I started following Gary, and so I read all the books and learned as much as I could about him. Um, and then by just happen chance, I went to VaynerMedia's website, and they had a graphic designer internship uh, position open. So I applied for that, um, didn't hear anything back for a long time, and then got a random email at like 11 o'clock on a Wednesday one night uh, that said, hey, let's get on a call tomorrow with, with one of the recruiters here, and moved up worked as, as an intern for about seven months or so. And then uh, under a weird circumstance, Gary and I ended up in an Uber together for an hour. And by the end of that, I was on his team. Very cool, man. And it's so interesting with social media and this idea of pulling from different audiences, because just as you mm -hmm. said, you were introduced to Gary on Chase Jarvis's show. I was introduced to Chase Jarvis with Gary being on that show. So it's, you know, right. it's interesting how those uh, things happen. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Tyler Babin as the artist. Uh, what I want to know is mm -hmm. where do you turn to for inspiration? Is it is it music? Is it movies? Is it just life? Obviously, in New York City, you've got a ton of stuff going on around you, and there's tons that you can pull from that. But when you need inspiration, where are you pulling that from? Uh, so, I mean, lately, I would say life is providing a lot of inspiration is like just the natural ebbs and flows um, of like what sort of my daily happenings are going on and like relationships and stuff like that. Um, but when I, when I really need inspiration, I'm kind of like in a rut. I, uh, I'm really big on walking through the city for just like hours and hours and hours listening to music. Yeah. Um, and just kind of to a point where like, just walk until like you can't walk anymore and like your brain sort of goes blank. And I just, that's where a lot of my ideas come from, hmm. uh, if I'm trying to force it. But, but I would definitely say as of lately, uh, so much like, I don't know, life is just like throwing some weird curveballs sure. and so I almost like weirdly think you should put yourself in positions that are super uncomfortable and foreign and like let life sort of unfold because that's, I think, where the most natural uh, ideas and like the things you're going to be most passionate about come from. You're speaking my language like the majority of what I talk about is this concept of embracing discomfort and actually seeking uh, discomfort. And we've taken that to extremes here, you know, with my life and, and with our business and, and what we do, like we're actively seeking <laughs> as uncomfortable of situations as we could possibly put it, put ourselves yeah. into man. And so let me ask you this. So t let's just say tomorrow, it's Saturday, no camera, no phone, no internet. What does Tyler Babin do all day tomorrow? Oh man. Um, <laughs> Except that's a tough besides one. look for your phone and camera and computer. <laughs> yeah. It, I, after I've had a thorough panic attack of not having any of my things, um, I would try, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm big on trying to just be in like a more real life place with like my friends and family lately. That's awesome. I love that, man. So, we talked about Babin before the Vayner Media. Let's mm -hmm. talk about him now and just what have you seen has been the biggest difference in who you are, how you see the world, how you operate since being plugged into this just incredible machine? Like, who are you now versus yeah. then? And what's that look like for you? It's, I mean, it's funny. One, I was a kid and now it's like I'm 24, but I feel like I'm 40. <laughs> like, I mean, New York, New York kind of does a number on you, but it makes you grow up. So it's funny. I think my parents, like, <laughs> for a while, it like took a while to like recognize me because I changed so yeah. much. Wow. Um, and I mean, it's been a two years of an absolute whirlwind, right? Like, it's yep. been a blur and trying to like nitpick how much has actually happened in the last couple of years is tough. Yep. Um, but it one has made me realize that like anything's possible because 
if two years ago you would have told this kid who was like boarding a flight in Florida what his life was going to look like in two years, I would have laughed you out of the room. I was like, there's no possible way any of that's going to happen. Um, so now it's it's made a situation where I literally think in everything is in play always forever. Like, and yeah. in, in I can think of the most abstract, ridiculous idea. And I'm like, no, that checks out. Like, yeah. I think if I like put my energy there, six months to a year, I can start putting some real pieces in place. Um, That's the best feeling ever, right? It's it's incredible. It's dude. Like, man. I feel like I've like really unlocked like a secret and like, it seems like the rest of the world doesn't know about it, yeah. but it's crazy. Like you can do anything. I was having this conversation with a friend of mine the other day. He's like, dude, you got this going on, this going on and talking about all these things that have been happening in my life. And, and he was talking about all these incredible things happening in his life. And I was like, man, but isn't it awesome to be able to look at those situations and been like, yeah, it makes sense. Like, of course that happened. Like it's, yeah. it's just all like, of course things are falling into place because the intense, right. And the work ethic is behind it. And so of course these yeah. things will happen. Do, do you have now, <laughs> and I find myself doing this and I try not to, but do you have like this complete and utter disrespect for the lack of <laughs> effort that other people put in on a daily basis? Like it's almost hard to talk to other people sometimes. Yeah, I mean, and like I was saying, like living in like this vortex, yeah, it's it's honestly hard to even like, like you said, I mean, it's tough to have conversations <laughs> with people sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, and I think it's it's natural. I think that, you know, whenever you're sort of like entrepreneur or like have an entrepreneur mindset and you take you know really different paths you start to see the unlocks. But like, if you yeah. live a life that's very much based off like the system, as I call it, of like, you know, you go to school and then you go to college and like you do everything right and you make those steps, there's sort of only one path for you sure. until you're like, wait, and you start looking around, you're like, there's all these other paths that you can be on. And so when you step onto one of those other paths and you start seeing all the weird unlocks in the world and like how things fall into place, it is just like super clear and understanding to me. So I'm very empathetic to someone that's like sort of lived like one, one track their whole life. Sure. It's tough to, to think and everything's possible. And it's tough to put in that extra amount of effort because maybe it just doesn't seem like it's going to work no matter how hard you, you go at it. And do you look back at that time? Like, okay, you just moved to New York. You're mm -hmm. just starting on this whirlwind I think back to my life and, and when that happened just three and a half years ago, and was that not such a fragile, fragile piece of time where you could have gone one or two ways? Like you could have embraced yeah. it, gone all in like you did, or you could have easily failed and not yeah. put your hundred percent in and you would have been washed out and you would have been back to doing something else. And it was that one defining period of time that has now set you on this trajectory to where just like you said, in your mind, there's not a single thing that's not possible. Yeah. I mean, so it's funny you say that. So after my like six months of internship, I got an email one day that said, thanks for all the hard work, but uh, we don't have a job for you. So this is going to be your last day. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, and I remember I walked out of the office and I'm like standing in midtown Manhattan and like, it was just like the one single tear that starts like <laughs> dripping down my face. And I was just like, what am I going to do? Yeah. And so, cause at this, at this point I'm like, shit, I don't have a college degree. I haven't done much of anything to like prove people what I'm capable of doing. And so I had a real moment where I was like, all right, I guess I'm moving back home. Like yeah, yeah. I tried and, and it didn't work out. Um, and so to think of like being at that crossroads, but I, I ended up staying and like hacked together a way to make it work. I just can't even, I don't even want to think about my life, like what it would have been sure. if I would have left, you know, That's it's, awesome. it's so crazy. But dude, if you just go all in and like, like you said, like you're the intense, right? And it's also about being self-aware. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. you have to, you have to know who you are. Like I knew that I was, I'm meant to do something. Yep. Um, but yeah, man, it was, it was a very fragile time. It could it's, have gone. And it's it, such an incredible feeling now. I, I can, I know for you uh, to look back and know that in that moment that you did go down the right road and that you're there now for a reason that you've earned it. Like you've earned yep. the right to have that feeling of being just 
just powerful, right? Like it's, it's incredible. Um, one thing that I do want to ask, and I love asking people this because it always puts them on the spot and creates this is actually, you know what, this is, this is how you got on the podcast is because I asked Jeff Castillo this very question. So who would you like to hear on the breadwinner podcast here in the future? Oh man. Can I reference my Instagram for two seconds? You can, <laughs> I'm yeah, trying to see. I'm absolutely. trying to think of actually, because I know that there's definitely people for I want sure. to see on. Um, I would say, so I've got two people in mind, okay. uh, two video creators that I'm insanely inspired by. The first one would be uh, Sam Evans, who okay. is a, uh, a photographer and videographer based in Australia. Okay. Um, and then also uh, to have a, have a female side, uh, and a girl named Anna who lives in Brooklyn. Um, and I can't pronounce her last name, but I'm going to screenshot it and send it, it to you. Who's another, it. like just people who are like inspiring to me. Yeah. Um, those would be my two, but, but Sam is an absolute killer. He's like 21 and he's like wow. doing all these insane brand deals. And he like inspires the shit out of me every day. Yeah. Um, so I'd love to, I'd love to get a little bit of a peek deeper into his life. Awesome. Well, just like you said, man, you just put that the universe is now in motion and making that happen. So I appreciate that. So, man, tell everybody where they can find you if they want to learn more about you, obviously connect with you on social. But if there's anything else that you want uh, people to go to and check you out. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm most active on Instagram. So it's just at Babin. Uh, I'm trying to get more active on Twitter. So that one's at Tyler underscore Babin. I'm fighting hard to get at Babin on there. But (laughs) They're giving me a hard time. Uh, those are those are the real two places to get at me. Um, also, TylerBabin.com, which is I've kind of it's like sort of a funny joke now because TylerBabin.com hasn't been updated in like three years. So if you want to see all my really old work, that's a great place for it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, those are the three places to get at me. I want to talk to everyone in the world, so I'm super open to to collaborations and chatting, and that's, that's pretty much it. Is there a uh, Bobby Babin's Beef Jerky.com yet? I'm making some real moves on it. I'll tell you what, it's, it's so funny. Like the people that come out of the woodwork, like I have, I've had two distributors actually contact me like, yo, we can make it happen. And I was like, Oh my God. Yes. This is insanity. That's, I, I just, I mean, for your sake, I hope that's not your legacy is the beef jerky. I, mean, that's I, re- I really hope not, but, <laughs> but, a but check it's, a, be nice. it's a solid plan B. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, man, I can't thank you enough for being on here. I know obviously your schedule is insanely hectic, but man, uh, kudos to you, uh, honestly, for, for taking that on and taking it on in stride, man, and, and reaching that defining moment and, and choosing the right, uh, the right path, dude. It's, there's so many that don't. And it's so much fun and it's so inspiring to see those that have, man. I love it. So thank you so much for being on, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you having me. This was great. And with that, this is the Breadwinner Podcast. Again, I am your host, Tyler Harris. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button and leave a review on this episode. And until next time, we'll see you then. Breadwinner.